terminal in Puttgarten. We left Berlin at 6 o'clock. We'll be in Copenhagen by 4 or 5 in the morning. And it's getting cold. Hello. Oh yes, yeah, cold. Show us your nipples, boys. It is chilly. Show us your scammel wheel nuts. It's yeah. a tad chilly. It is a tad chilly. I've got my woolly hat on. Sam's got holes in his trousers. For ventilation. Quasars in his pyjamas, as ever. <laughs> Shunk on. Jam on. I said chick, chick, chick on. Yeah, so welcome to the European Tour of Industrial Infrastructure 2024. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, it's a great photo. of the bus, fetid recesses. We arrived here at it's nearly done. three or four o'clock this morning, which mercifully I was asleep for. This is the KB Haller in Copenhagen. And tonight, apparently we are using for the first time on this trip, our own PA. So for the first time on this trip, the truck has been fully unloaded. And there's kids arriving here for their Sunday morning football training. They have a dozen clay tennis courts out the back. Or more, possibly. I was not bored enough to count them. There's all our gear. The stage has been built and it's ready to go. There we are, there appears to be power to whatever station this is. I think that's probably just clean power. Thanks to me. More decrementals. Power control unit. The thing is, because most of the gear we use nowadays is computer based, the power has to be absolutely clean because if you have dodgy power and it's going up and down or going on and off or in any way spiking or is unstable all your equipment can just reset itself in the middle of a show and it can be disturbing to say the least so clean power is everything You're marking out where everything's going to go? Yeah, I'm taking a little measure of the room and ah, the okay. software, which tells me where to put the speakers. Right. Technology, eh? Yeah, we love it. <laughs> I'm a technophile. I love technology. Good. Also known as a gear slut. <laughs> Big stage. The Dark Alley. <coughs> I've had breakfast, which was really good. I've had a shower, which was really good. And I'm just going to dump this in the dressing room. And then I'm going walkies. So I think I might try and find Cristiano, the sort of hippie city. 
Thank you. Today's dressing room. I'll show you the tennis courts just by way of proof. There we go, there's loads of them. And while it's not a sunny day, it's not raining either, so walkers are in order. We're in the dressing room in Copenhagen. I have to share this photo. It's taken by Jan Persson in this very hall on the 11th of September 1965 at a Kinks show and I love the look on the face of the guy on the right who looks like some kind of security or hall official and this young man caught in the vice-like grip of rock and roll <coughs> And this sums up what must have been a culture clash for a lot of this guy's generation. And I think it's hard to underestimate the importance and the shock of what was going on in that era. This was the first generation of teenagers who did not aspire to be like their parents when they grew up. They wanted to be anything but. It was also the first generation of teenagers to have some kind of disposable income of their own. And it was inevitable then that they would have a culture of their own. And this photo captures the incomprehension of the parents' generation of what their children were experiencing. Fabulous photo. And following on from that, in the next door dressing room, here is a photo of the Rolling Stones in this hall, 5th of April 1966, photo of Christian Hansen. And these poor people are surveying the wreckage. And as in the Kinks photo, trying to understand what is going on with their children. The security guy here looks as though he's got a hand reaching out to try and comfort this woman who is clearly rather devastated at something. Maybe one of her children has gone missing. Look at the smashed seats. Let's do a trawl through the other dressing rooms and see what we can find. Okay, I'm going to attempt a gear run through. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to manage it, playing and holding the camera, but I'll do my best. So my system is, I have a Sennheiser wireless receiver from the guitar, a Kemper profile no, ahead with remote. And I'll just run through some of the patches. I've got a basic sort of clean sound here for the first set. I have a patch that I use as a sort of generic general patch which has a short slap back delay on it and I'll just clean that up. It's a Michael Britt Fender Pro Amp and I used to have a Pro Amp and I loved it and this is a really nice profile of it. I've got a little slap back delay on that pedal. I've got a longer delay here. I've got distortion there. And I've got a boost there. So I can do pretty much everything from total clean sounds to nice singing distortion. I'm just going to put the camera down for a minute and just play through the sounds that I have available from that patch. Here's a clean one. As you can hear it's got a nice little furriness, which if I crank up my mid boost. Just 
crunches a little bit then I've got the slap back delay on it I've got a distortion a longer delay and a boost and all of those are on foot pedals then I've got a uh, patch that I use for Moonlight Shadow. It's got a compressor and I've got a distortion for the solo. Then I've got a patch for Summit Day, which has a delay on it that I've got on pedal number four. Then I've got, I go back to my basic clean patch for Family Man. And then for the gem, I start off clean, then bring in the delay and the distortion later on. Getting on to tubular bells, the first thing I have to do is play this high tune. I'll play, play the sound and then explain what I've done. There's still some stuff there that's not mine. I think there's the case of the piano. So, I use this for anything that's double speed guitar. And I've got a transpose feature on. And then after the transpose, I put an EQ, an equaliser, because if you don't, if I turn off the equaliser, there's a nasty uh, higher frequency sort of aliasing effect. So the equaliser basically rolls off all the top end. I then go to this next patch for... Um, hang on, I've got to put the camera down again. I need a proper stand. This, this patch is for... Also use that with a distortion and a delay for then I've got this for the blues then I've got this sound for the And the um, for that section, I've got this one. I go back to the blues sound for and then this one for. And then for double speed guitar, I go back to my initial patch. Two slightly distorted guitars. Then I nip over to an acoustic patch for the acoustic, obviously. And then for two bit of bells part two, I start off with this, which is the compressor and some reverb for the harmonics that I have to play for bloody hours. That goes into that's got a pitch shift on it. Then for caveman. Obviously I'll play it properly on the show. And then for the end ambient guitars section. That's a Michael Britt 67 Deluxe Reverb profile.
my rig run through. It's that simple. The advantage of using something programmable is that it's the same every night and that makes the engineer happy because the levels are identical every night. My sound check takes about 30 seconds because it's always the same and also if they want me a bit louder or quieter in a certain passage of the piece instead of them having to do it they just ask me can I take that sound down or up by a dB or two so we can gradually tweak it as we go along. Instead of having to bend down and mess around with pedals I just hit one button and everything goes to where it's supposed to be. It really is that simple. What better way to start a video than with a bed of snowdrops with some crocuses as well. I've probably missed the crocuses at home which is a great shame because for me it heralds spring. Okay we're in Copenhagen. I'm walking down to a place where apparently you can see elephants. Who would have thought it eh? And <coughs> just some brief thoughts on the subject of uh, the photos we saw inspired by the photos we so just a brief talk just a brief talking out loud meditation thing on the sort of on the photos we saw in the dressing rooms of the culture shock of early rock and roll and it's interesting that it was only eight years <coughs> Okay, I'll start all that again. So just a sort of brief, uh, brief walk and talk today about the development of rock and roll and popular music or vernacular music as I prefer to think of it. <coughs> uh, the photos in the dressing rooms inspired these thoughts about how in the 60s, when I was what, nine, ten years old, didn't really take part in what was going on <coughs> but that was the first generation of teenagers that did not want to imitate their parents previous generation for a boy what you wanted to do was learn to smoke a pipe and get leather patches on the elbows of your jacket and be like your dad for most girls you wanted to learn to cook get a Katie Boyle hostess trolley Yes, there really was such a thing. And be like your mum. And then that generation in the 60s went, no, actually, I don't want to do that. And that was also the first generation of teenagers who had disposable income. And put those two things together and you got that explosion of their own culture which and the key to rock and roll in those years was that your parents had to hate it that was the most important thing about pop music your parents had to hate it and they did they thought the Rolling Stones were animals the Beatles kind of squeaked under the radar because they were nice boys and wore suits but as soon as the Sergeant Pepper era arrived they were equally disgusting to the parents' generation. Not the case with my parents, I hasten to add. They embraced it. But for most pop music fans, most teenagers at that time, it was crucial that your parents hated it. And nowadays it's very difficult to have any kind of rebellion related to pop music when your mum and dad are listening to Kanye West, Jay-Z, whatever, I'm probably a few years out of date, but there you go. It's an age thing. But there's hardly any rebellion anymore, and the kind of brutality of a lot of modern urban music makes the Rolling Stones look like a bunch of pussies, frankly. That's possibly one of the reasons why popular music is no longer the centre of culture for young people. It no longer identifies your tribe. And it was only, as I say, eight short years between 1965, where we saw that utter incomprehension of the older generation and the young Kinks fan lost in the pure ecstasy of the moment, 
to the chin stroking earnestness of the piece of music that we're playing on tour Mike Oldfield's Tubular Bells which wasn't really rebellious in any traditional sense it was rebellious in its own somewhat academic way in that it mimicked the structures and the uh, processes of classical music more than it mimicked rock and roll and then we were plunged headlong into the 70s with that album and Dark Side of the Moon which again was hardly a uh, rabble rousing cry to, to revolution there all that from one photograph the power of art ladies and gentlemen right I've got to turn right at this big road no I haven't I've got to turn left at this big road phew okay we're at the zoo I've just walked around the back of the zoo through the park totally failed to see anything even vaguely resembling an elephant and I deeply hate zoos so I'm not going in we're going to go in search of Christiana the so-called hippie commune where I'm told there are some good examples of another little I suppose you'd call it a fetish I prefer to think of it as an interest but then so do people who beat each other and uh, so on and so forth uh, another little fetish of interest of mine self build houses anyone who knows about the ar architect Walter Seagal will know what I'm talking about when I say that I built that my studio is a Seagal design house a building I'm not very articulate this morning but I need to find the metro get on that and go into the harbour area where Cristiano is late as potatoes as I say couldn't find the elephants but here's a couple of camels I knew you'd be pleased there we are <coughs> okay we're in Cristiano I'm not entirely sure about the ethos of filming here it used to be forbidden and discouraged but now apparently it's not a problem I'm kind of interested to see whether the hippie dream has failed or succeeded here. There are so many other parts of the world where it's been tried and it's not really succeeded. But this looks okay. Some interesting growth on this tree trunk. Whether that's appropriate for dinner or not, I don't really know. Uh, Freetown Christiana started when in 1971 <coughs> when some people broke through the fence of what was at the time a disused military barracks and decided to occupy it and not let this land go to waste but to actually use it and it's grown and has become very much a part of Copenhagen of massive tourist attraction apparently though luckily because it's drizzly it's not that busy today and that in itself is a quite interesting tension between the hippie ideal and the fact that it's a tourist attraction and thus must provide significant income for the people that live here This looks like a recycling place. See, I told you I'd take you to the interesting places, didn't I? Always take you out the pretty way. Yeah, lovely. A rubbish dump. Perfect. This has the look of a building that has been adopted and adapted.
Okay, thank you. So today we are using and I'm lost. Today we are using our own PA for the first time on the entire debug. And they're about to turn it on. I don't know if that's Sam testing his monitors or if it's other Sam doing the front house. Hello. That sounds like it's working. That's a full house. We've got all the speakers working. First Excellent. time. That's in the right good. order? In the right order. They're all, all the sounds coming out the correct places. Good. Hopefully it's going to go to the correct places, which oh. is what I'm going to check now. <laughs> Fab. That must have been a moment of great relief. It was, yes. Yeah, the first time we used it all tour, so it was a bit like, oh God, I really hope that everything that we prepped works. And luckily it does. <laughs> first time. Good. And you didn't forget the one cable without which the whole thing... No, we did We work. did forget some uh, string for the PA to keep it from rotating, so someone had to run out and buy us some. <laughs> so they weren't very happy with us about that. But okay. you know, other than that, everything's good. Brilliant. That's great. No rest. 